this video is sponsored by Envato Elements. Oftentimes as video editors, we have to work with whatever footage we are given. Sometimes that means that footage is super, super boring. Today in Final Cut Pro, I'm gonna show you how you can actually improve those boring shots and make them look more, dare I say, cinematic. So I have this pretty dull shot of this guy just sitting here at a park or something. He's working in his notebooks, but it just feels so flat, so dull and very, very digital. Let's go ahead and see how we can improve this. The first thing I would take a look at is to check the frame rate on a shot. Now this shot happens to be at 60 frames per second. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the shot and select our speed remapping tools and select automatic speed. So this will slow it down to 40% giving our shot a little bit more of a cinematic feel. Now, you don't always get lucky with that. Maybe it's a 30 frame per second shot. You can still slow that down to 80% in a 24 timeline, and it can definitely help improve, especially when you're working with like an amateur actor or something along those lines. So we have our slow-mo shot. Now, something that's really, really standing out to me is the composition of this shot. I feel like it's very poorly balanced. I don't like how he is directly in the center of the frame, especially with all this stuff cluttered off to the right-hand side. So let's go ahead and change the framing on this. Luckily, it was shot in 4K. So I'm gonna zoom in to about 130%, and I'm gonna go ahead and set my position over to the left-hand side. So now we're following more of a rule of thirds look, making our shot appear just a little bit better. The next element is definitely going to be color grading this shot. You can see how bland it looks. It looks like they shot in a flat profile, which is always helpful, but we're definitely going to want to bring out the richness of this shot. So I'm going to push command six to bring up the color grading wheels. Now this is not an in-depth color grading tutorial, but uh, I'll just cover some light basics and then you can fill in the rest. I'm also going to push command seven to give me the scopes and command control one to get rid of the media browser. Right off the bat, let's go ahead and bring in some contrast and I'll bring this down quite a bit. I'm going to bring up the midtones and then I'm going to bring down the highlights considerably and that's going to help really make this grass look way less overexposed. Even though it still is overexposed, it helps a lot. So we're going to bring that way, way down there and we can bring up our midtones even a little bit more, just making sure our skin is looking good. From there, let's go ahead and add in a color curves effect, and we're gonna make what's called an S curve to bring in some really nice contrast. And again, we can bring down those highlights just a little bit. Now from here, we're gonna add a hue saturation curve, bring up the saturation of everything just a little bit, and then let's select the skin tone and we can bring up his skin tone saturation. Then looking at the hue versus hue, let's go ahead and shift the green of this grass. This green really says to me, this is digital and film tends to make greens look a little bit more yellow, a little bit warmer. So selecting that grass with the eyedropper, bring that grass to a more warm tone here. Not too much. And then we will also drop the luminance on the grass a bit, just to make it look even a little bit more properly exposed. Now add in another color wheels and we can push the shadows over to the teal side and the midtones over to the orange side. Let's also add one more color wheels. I'm gonna add a shape mask and I'm gonna place it around his face. Then I'm gonna really spread out the feather go to the outside element and drop the exposure on the rest of the shot. This is gonna give it a nice vignette and bring some brightness to his face. So we have a pretty basic grade here. Now it's not perfect, but it definitely looks a lot better than it did before. Again, not a color grading tutorial. This is just how I might do this. Some things that are really sticking out to me is just how digital this shot looks. It's a little bit too sharp and I think we can definitely improve that. Go into your effects and look up the Gaussian blur. We're gonna drop that on there and we're gonna set the amount down to something like two. It's super, super subtle, but this tends to make it look a little bit more filmic because film cameras weren't ultra sharp like digital cameras are. They tended to be a little bit soft. So we're gonna add in that softness just to make it look a little bit less digital. Let's go ahead and also add in some light handheld motion. 
And some people don't like handheld, I understand that, but I tend to like it. So I'm just gonna bring up the smoothness on this, and this is just a free plugin I have. I'll try and have a link down in the description. I'm gonna disable rotation, and we're just gonna leave it really, really subtle. So now this shot has this really light handheld motion to it, just giving it a little bit more of dynamics to it. I'm gonna push Command Control 1. So the next thing we're gonna work on is adding depth to this scene. Sometimes you are stuck with the shot you got and there's not much you can do, but luckily for us, this shot, we can do quite a bit. I'm gonna bring in this asset from our sponsor. Did somebody say sponsor? Envato Elements is changing the game with their incredible subscription service. They offer unlimited access to over 55 million assets. I don't know if you realize how large of a number that is. It is ginormous. They offer fonts, photos, stock footage, music, sound effects, WordPress themes, Final Cut Pro, and Motion 5 templates. They offer a super simple license and your license still counts even after your subscription has ended. If you follow the link in the description, you will get 50% off when selecting the annual subscription. Do yourself a favor, my friends, level up your video editing library and get Envato Elements today. We are going to actually drop this tree out of focus. And what's great about this asset, rather than using like a photograph, a PNG or something, is this actually has some nice wind motion to it, making it look a lot more realistic. Bring the scale way, way up. I'm gonna push Shift T and I'm just gonna drag it lightly out of frame. So we'll put it somewhere like that. And it's really okay that it's low resolution because of our secret weapon, the defocus blur. Now Final Cut Pro doesn't have the defocus blur built in, so you'll need to either publish it straight from Apple Motion, or you can also pick up my plugin, link in the description called Motion Tools, and that has the defocus blur for you. So now we can see that this tree is nicely blurred on the edge of frame. And I'm gonna even shift its position a little bit more but the greens aren't quite matching up. So let's push Command-6, and we can actually just drop down here to the hue, and we're gonna shift the hue so that it gets into the warmer tones there. Something like that. And we could even push around the colors a little bit just to get them to match as good as we can. We could also bring down the highlights just a little bit, and we should be good to go. So now we have this nice motion of the trees but you'll see that we have the handheld motion happening on the shot underneath. So let's go ahead and look up our handheld effect. I'll drop that onto our trees and I will bring up the smoothness considerably. Now what's great about applying these separately is it's actually gonna give us a little bit of a 3D parallax because they're happening on different entities. Let's go ahead and push Option, click and drag to duplicate the tree item and we'll flip it on to the other side. And so we'll just use these branches to nicely frame up what we want the focus of the scene to be. And I'm gonna make the one on the right a lot larger and we could even drop it more out of focus just to make it more realistic because it's closer to the camera and should be more out of focus. And what's great about this is now we're covering this ugly plastic tube that's on the table. And we could actually even drop the one on the left a little bit more out of focus. This is totally up to taste however you want to do it. We have these two tree elements. They're adding some nice depth to the scene. Let's go ahead and add some dynamics to the camera motion. So what's great is we can drop all of this into a compound clip. So I'm actually just going to trim this off. Select all these clips, push Option G, and create a compound clip. Now we can add some animation to this scene and these trees are gonna move along. So I'm gonna add a keyframe at the beginning position. We wanna focus down on the fact that he's placing the pen down on the table. So we'll just go ahead and shift our focus down to the table. And so now over the duration of our shot, we'll have this nice slow camera movement that's going to feel a little bit more dynamic than the original shot. And with that slight handheld motion, it really makes it feel real. Perfect, so now from here, I'm gonna jump in and I have some film grain generators. You can get these from anywhere. I'm gonna set the blend mode to overlay so that we just have a nice subtle grain over the entire elements here. Then from there, I'm gonna add in an adjustment layer, drop that on top and set this to letterbox. Just like so, because everything is way more cinematic with black bars. 
So now I'm gonna actually go to the first keyframe here and set this a little bit higher just so we have a larger range of motion. So we can see him working here on his book. It's slowly moving down. The trees are tracking with it so it feels really 3D. And then let's go ahead and jump into our adjustments and we're gonna drop on a LUT because everything is more cinematic with a LUT. I'm gonna use my friend Dylan John's LUTs. I'll try and have a link in the description. They're excellent and we'll drop in the boulder standard. I tend to like how that looks for this scene. So now everything's got a common grade over the top. So we have this much more cinematic looking shot. So here is the before, and here is the after. So those are some steps that I might take to make a shot look that much better. So just a quick overview, reframe a shot by using some zoom and it's also not incredibly important that it's 4K because you're gonna blur it a little bit with a Gaussian blur. Try and add in some additional elements that are out of focus. That's gonna really add a lot of depth to your scene. Try and add in some camera motion, a nice tilt to really make the scene more alive. And also color grading is super important in making your shot look that much richer. So hopefully this was helpful to you. If it was, consider pressing that like button, consider subscribing, you might also really enjoy this tutorial about doing a sky replacement using the object tracker in Final Cut Pro. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.